Hi everyone, it's Allison from Fathom 5 Tarot. And this is my fourth attempt to record this video. And I was gonna leave it till tomorrow, but now I'm so <laughs> determined to do it today that even though I've lost the light, I've been dragging in lamps every time this fails so that I can just do it. It's ridiculous. Um, I don't know what's going on. My, uh, my recorder keeps timing out, so we'll see if, um, if I can still make this work. Uh, but anyway, this is going to be, the reason I'm so excited is that I hope that this is going to be the first in a new series of videos that I'd like to do called What I've Learned From and then Insert Tarot Deck. And I've been thinking about this a while because I sort of was wondering about my place here on YouTube um, because I don't really do a ton of walkthroughs. I have done walkthroughs and unboxings in the past, but I'm just not well set up for it. Um, as of yet, I don't really know how to edit. Um, and I don't have a, I just do this on my laptop. So the laptop faces me and I talk into it, which has been so rewarding today. Um, but like you're way better off if you want to see a full deck that you're thinking of buying, you're weather, way better off checking out um, Kelly at the Truth and Story or Papa Squirrel or Lisa Papas from Supportive Tarot. Um, and I can link their sites below. And there's lots of others that do full walkthroughs of decks with good editing and um, you can really see the cards clearly, whereas I'm just holding them up to the camera. So there's that. Uh, but also, I just know that in this time, like, like, if you're able to buy new decks, that's great, but not everybody's able to buy new decks right now. Um, and nor should, like, if you're not, then that's fine. You can get by with one tarot deck. Uh, you can get by with a tarot app. It doesn't matter. Um, but I just was feeling anxious about like contributing and you know, no criticism again to anybody who does these videos, but I was like, what do I have to offer that might be different? So what I thought I'd do instead is encourage myself to go into the decks that I have. And uh, although I did just get a new deck this week, but I'll talk about that later once I've had a ch chance to work with it a bit. Um, but, and then talk about what I have learned from using these decks specifically. And that way, if you decide based on the cards that I show, and I'm not gonna show every card because I wanna talk about the cards that I'm showing, you can decide if it's a deck that you want uh, to purchase, or you can take interesting things, hopefully, that I say about the cards that, the ones that have made me think about the decks or the cards in a different way, maybe than I had before, and apply it to the decks that you do have. And then you don't need to feel like you need to be constantly bringing new things in. I mean, I have found it very helpful to look at the work of a variety of artists and creators, and it's helped me in my growth, but maybe just watching videos can help in our growth. And I really thought about this since um, I talked about uh, a few cards from the Wild Unknown Tarot um, in a response to Papa Squirrel. I can link that video. Um, and even when I got the Bone Stone and Earth Flesh Tarot, I mean, that was a deck that I had literally just received. And um, I did just a chance to flip through and give my reactions to some of the cards and what I think they really have to offer. But um, it's uh, it wasn't a full deck flip through. And I, and I just want to talk about some cards. So so we'll see how this goes. And hopefully people like it and uh, can get something from it, whether or not you're going to buy a new deck. So before I begin, and I won't say this every time, I think. I don't know, I might. <laughs> uh, but I really sort of ascribe to the views of this French poet, Paul Valéry, that I, um, I teach poetry. And um, he said one of my favorite quotations of all time about poetry, which is, I write half the poem and the reader writes the other half. And that's my approach to tarot as well. Like everything, that's why every person, every reader is going to be slightly different is because they're going to bring some of themselves to the cards and then therefore the interpretation, um, depending on their experience and knowledge, just the way when you read a poem, if you're reading a love poem, it'll be different if you're in love or seeking love or just having gone through a breakup, your interpretation of that will be quite different. So um, that's, uh, that's what I think. So if you look at these cards and disagree with me, fantastic. I'd love to have a conversation about that in the comments. If you don't find it useful, I totally get it. Um, it's also personal um, in how, uh, how the tarot works. So the deck that I'm gonna be talking about today is the Anna Kay Tarot. Um, this happens to be the indie edition. I don't have the mass market edition. 
Uh, it's uh, got really sturdy cardstock if you care about that. It's smaller than your standard tarot card. It's quite a bit shorter and a little bit wider. Um, so I'm not very good at lining them up, but it's boxier. It's a boxier deck. Um, I really like it, uh, but I know there are people who much prefer the mass market. Um, mass market has big, um, this is a spoiler for what's coming, uh, has big black borders and, and I think the colors are a little bit more saturated. Sorry, I have to have funny angles now that I have a thousand floor lamps in here. Um, so many people feel like the colors are more vivid. As a matter of fact, that's where I'm wearing my uh, reading glasses when I look at these because um, the colors are a little darker. So hopefully my, there's one of my lights. Hopefully this is going to work out. So what I've done is I've selected uh, cards from all of the suits, including a couple courts, uh, as well as some majors to talk about what I think this deck really has to offer in terms of knowledge and understanding um, in a way that maybe other decks don't. Uh, so I'm going to start with the majors. I didn't really put them in order order, but I did sort of go majors and then group the suits. I probably should have put them in order, but oh well. Video started and it's still going and I don't want to jinx anything. I'm not stopping again. Um, so here we go. The first one. Oh, actually, let me talk a little for a second about what puts people off about this deck. Because I think um, initially I was not at all interested in this deck because of the art style of the drawing of the people. Um, so I'm going to just show the Empress card. This isn't going to be one that I discuss in this video. Um, but, uh, she's very voluptuous as you can see, but a lot of these, the people in this deck have kind of squashy faces. Um, it's a little more cartoonish perhaps. Um, but I mean, you want normal looking people in tarot decks, which is also awesome. In a much earlier video than this, I sort of maybe unfairly categorized them as cabbage patch dolls with a grudge, which is maybe not the, not the most fair. Um, but there's a very specific artistic aesthetic to this deck. But um, I have totally moved beyond that, uh, even though it wouldn't have been necessarily my artistic choice. I... I I can't now under untwine it from the love I have for this deck and the genius of this deck. Um, so if this is if this is what's putting you off, and, and you're in the market for another deck, which nobody has to be, everybody's fine with the decks they have. Um, don't uh, think about it. Think about it. Okay. So uh, I want to talk about this lovers card. Um, again, to avoid the glare, I'm probably going to have to show it in stages. There's their feet. <laughs> There's their head. I love this lover's card so, so, so much. Um, I love the physical closeness. There's clearly still a physical intimacy there, but this is a couple who's been together for a long time. They have seen some years come and go together. And it looks like a real partnership. Like there's a lot of balance in this card. Um, and I just like... It, not now of course the lover's card doesn't have to be about romantic love or physical love or anything like that but in that particular reading like isn't this what we all want that's what I want um is a partner to be like old with um and still have like clearly that level of physical attraction so this isn't a sexless card um as we so often like just take sexuality away from people who are older than 20 so that's a bit of an exaggeration, but still, um, I just think this is a great aspirational lover's card. I've been having some conversations on Instagram with a friend of mine about the idea of twin flame, and I'm going to avoid that minefield for now. But, um, but uh, anyway, I just think it's a great lover's card um, in a card where so often I think youth is depicted. Um, I love it. Devil's card. Get ready. Ready for this? Because this devil card has a literal orgy, <laughs> literally, on it. Um, oh, I should have said there's nudity. Sorry, my, my finger was covering up the boobs. Sorry, there's nudity in this deck. Not a ton, uh, but I'm sorry if that offends you. And I, I should have, I'll put something in the description about a warning. Um, a cat has jumped on the table, so just say no. Uh, what I really like about this devil's card is that um, he, the devil is detached staring straight ahead, offering grapes, like there's feasting and I almost said another F word that I probably shouldn't say on here, uh, feasting and copulation and fighting and drinking. 
Um, but he's offering grapes, but look how eagerly this person is seeking the grapes. Um, that there's a balance of agency here. Um, now, I want to be really careful about this because often the devil card is talking about um, addictive behaviors or disordered behaviors that it's not just so easy to stop that and say, oh, well, I've got the strength and stop it. Um, but I think it's it can be a really helpful reminder um, that the devil is not necessarily seeking you out, uh, that these things, that, that there is, there's, you maybe have more control than you think you have. I mean, there's just no engagement with anything that's happening. It could be carved out of stone, right? It just, there's just nothing there. Uh, and there are no chains in this depiction, which I also find really interesting. Like everybody's having a grand old time and there's a time for that. Um, as long as you can maintain that balance. So I love that depiction of the devil card. Um, I'm not going to dwell too much on strength because I feel like I talk about the strength card all the live long day on here. Um, but as I've said many times, my ideal strength card doesn't show overpowering, but um, rather an understanding of strength and how it's used. And I just love the expression on her face here where she's like, yeah, I see your teeth. Mm -hmm. Good kitty. <laughs> like just not moved by the ferocity but knowing how to counter it as well and when I what I hope for strength in my life is um, to have all kinds of strength and supportive strength for other people and strength for myself to see myself through difficult things but also just the strength to take other people's aggression or other people's um, like negative energy and just deflect gently uh, and not like get into a power struggle with it um, which is sometimes easier said than done, but, uh, I do try. So, and I'm pretty, I, well, actually I'm a conflict avoider, so I'm super good at it, too good at it maybe. Uh, I really find this wheel of fortune card interesting. And to me, it sort of links a bit with the devil card because, oh shoot. Okay. Glare, glare, glare. Okay. Can you see that there's a hand, there's a figure turning the wheel? Um, and there are people on the top having just the best time. And there's someone falling off, having not a good time. And then someone like, I just like the crawling up the wheel, just the physical force exhibited there is so good. Um, but the person turning the wheel is again, passive, like not, not emotionally involved at all. Just turning the wheel because the wheel turns. Um, and at times when, when misfortune can feel so deeply personal, um, and I think a lot about the response to COVID and the response to having wear masks all the time, which sucks. I wear a mask all day long, all the time. I'm exhausted when I go upstairs. For the first month, I could not keep my eyes open at the end of the day. I was so tired from wearing a mask all day long. Um, but it's not personal. It's just something you got to do, all right? Like, it's just what it is. Um, but it can feel super personal and super aggravating. And um, But the sooner you accept that the wheel will turn, then you'll have greater appreciation for the time at the top and then hopefully the stamina and the perseverance to get through the inevitable times at the bottom. Um, and I, I don't think I have another deck where there's a figure turning the wheel. Um, I can't think of one. So I really like that. Um, I'm not going to talk about that one, actually. Sorry, I'm just keeping my eye on the clock. Uh the I'm not gonna talk about that one either. <laughs> I'm cutting it down, folks. Um, but I cannot pass the death card without talking about the death card. Um now this card could be interpreted as um sort of a bit of a pile of unicorn poop about death. <laughs> um it's that's not the skeletal rider from the Rider White Smith. Um it's not at all a frightening image. Um, death is very attractive here. Uh, one of the most attractive figures in the deck, actually. Um, but also, again, like the wheel, death is an inevitable inevitability. Um, it doesn't make it any less painful. Um, but, but to go into a death experience knowing that it's inevitability, um, and again, not just physical death, um, this was one of my very early tarot decks. And I've said many times on this channel that my mother moving through the last stages of her life, um, was what drew me to tarot in the first place in this crazy, weird way. Um, but, 
but this idea that um, it's a stage, it's an inevitable stage, and uh, it can't be avoided after a certain point, and uh, that there's something else. It does sort of remind me a little bit, for you Harry Potter fans out there, about the story of the Deathly Hallows that gets read, um, that the man who has the uh, invisibility cloak eventually meets death as an equal. That's what it reminds me of. Um, and that there's, I love this sort of something beyond. Um, and not everybody believes that. I hope there's something beyond. Uh, but I do find this a very comforting death card without just being, you know, fluffy bunnies and good times. Um, I don't know, I, I really like it. Um, but some people prefer a, a more straightforward death card and I totally get that. Okay, we're gonna go into the cups. Uh, I've got a couple of cups here. Um, this one is not really different from the Rider Waite Smith, uh, but it's exaggerated. Um, that again, the Four of Cups is looking away from what's being offered him. But what I like about this is the proportionality is um, of what's being offered him. There's just so much. Like, and everyone around him is having a good time, and he's such a grump. Um, just if he were to either raise his eyes to the beautiful women serving him food or lower his eyes to the food that was being served, he realized that there is something there for him to be happy about. Um, and everyone around him, again, is so happy. Uh, I just really, really like that depiction of the Four of Cups. It's such a good reminder to take stock of what we have and to take advantage of it, um, to enjoy it when we need it. Uh, the Six of Cups is beautiful. I just think it captures that idea of um, imagination and wistfulness and perhaps nostalgia. Um, but I also really like the idea. It's a bit, uh, even though she doesn't have super long hair, but it's a bit rapunzel -y to me. And I think it really speaks to some of the dangers of nostalgia. Um, although I'm like such a nostalgic person, but I'm very well aware that it's sort of a, f not false, maybe false, <laughs> maybe false emotion. Like there's nothing wrong with feeling nostalgia, but I find it can be a really comfortable little cave to hang out in, uh, that can lead to some negative things. Um, you know, I'm not going to get too political, I'm gonna get a little political, uh, but like make America great again. Like wasn't great for everybody in the past. Uh, so let's just be a little careful about how we use our nostalgia. Um, that the, the flowers are potted on the inside and growing from these pots on the inside, but make sure you go outside too and look at the wonders of now and, have, and think about the future as well without looking back too much. I think it's a really cool interpretation. Uh, uh, along with that, one of the most stunning cards in the deck, just the colors and the wistfulness and um, like the shadow. I just think it's a beautiful card. Okay, uh, we're going to do a pentacle. Oh, do I have only one pentacle? That doesn't seem right. No, I have two pentacles. Good. Phew. Um, so, oh shoot. I was going to do something for this. Can I do it quickly? Yeah, I can. One second. Sorry. I'm going to talk about the two of pentacles. But I, to do what I'm going to do, I need my Rider with Smith. And my tin will not open. What's happening? Ugh. So professional. Just talk amongst yourselves. Everything's fine. Hope everyone's having a good weekend. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. There we go. That wasn't too bad. Okay. So uh, two of cups. Uh, so we've got, uh, performative, um, but what I really like is the inclusion of the audience that the uh, two of cups, the two of pentacles, <laughs> the audience is appreciative of this, uh, particular juggling act. Uh, and I really like that, right? Sometimes when you're juggling a bunch of things in the two of pentacles, it feels like you're just like exhausted and trapped and no one sees the work that you're doing and you're frustrated and struggling. Um, but here it's like a joyful act. Um, and I think there is pride to be had in being able to manage different things at once, um, even with or without an audience, but just to know that 
probably there's somebody appreciating it. <laughs> there's probably someone who, who gets it and to not discount them as you go. Uh, the other thing I like about it is it really um, it really acknowledges something that I made a whole video about, again, pretty early on this channel. I, I will link it because I am quite proud of this one. But where I talked about the um, staged tarot cards, of which Two of Pentacles is one. Um, now, I keep meaning to read the biography of Pamela Coleman Smith, but there are a number of cards in the deck where it appears that the characters are on stages and the Two of Pentacles is one of those cards. Like the ships in the background, they're not like the wands ships. That is a very theatrical wave set. It looks like a prop. It looks like a stage set. And you can see the line where the stage meets the backdrop. Um, and I won't go into this too much because, again, I made a whole video about it. Um, but it's clear, for example, that the five of wands, that's not a staged card. Um, but let's see if I can find another staged. Five of pentacles looks staged. Um, Eight of Swords does not. Uh, and apparently Pamela Coleman Smith did do some theatrical stage design in her life. So I'm very interested in which, in the implications of the staged card, the performative aspects of the card. Um, and it's pretty cool. So I like that Anna Kay has, has sort of used that in her own artwork, but yet included the audience in the performative aspect. I think that's pretty awesome. Uh, the Knight of Pentacles is one of my favorite cards in general. I love me a Knight of Pentacles. And what I love in the Rider-Waite-Smith deck is it's clear if you look at the Knights, and this takes a bit of horse knowledge, which I happen to have, but, um, like the Knight of Pentacles is on a workhorse. He's on a heavier draft horse, like a Clydesdale or a, a Percheron, um, or a Frisian or something. Um, looks like a Frisian really. Uh, um, but because he goes slower, <laughs> Right? He's not dashing off like the Knight of Swords. And in this case, we've taken the Knight right off the horse and he is appreciating what he's done. The Knights are all sort of like hard workers and getting crap done and so sort of that youthful exuberance of, of rushing out into something. But he's not and he's just appreciating, I, I think the sunset, maybe the sunrise. Um, but it, I just, um, I really like that depiction, that horseless depiction of the Knight of Pentacles, I really like. Um, okay, now we're going, I'm going to leave the swords to the end because they're so good. Oh, sorry, here's another pentacle, the ace of pentacles. Um, now the ace, of, I'm going to, I'll transition from the, from the pentacles to the wands because I brought out both aces because in all of the suits, the aces are girls and, uh, they are, the ace of pentacles is another one where people are like, ugh, the face on that. Um, but I love that she's like barefoot and all dirty, right? Like the ace is the, the childlike joy and like getting into something new and starting something and inspiration. And I think we could all use a little more childlike joy, um, in our lives. Um, and given the fact that the wands is like the passion and the fire and the creativity, I love that her activity, her childlike activity is risky. I mean, look how high she is, right? Like Anytime you undertake a, a wand, um, it's like a wand energy, a new project, there is going to be a sense of risk there. But you should embrace it like this little gorgeous thing. Um, and look how much she's enjoying it. I just, oh God, I love it. Uh, on the other side of the wands, um, we're going to have, or like my other wand card I pulled is the Ten of Wands. Now this has a very specific energy that certainly deviates from the Rider Waite Smith. Um, in the in that deck, the wands are being carried, and we see the back of the person. Um, but here, there's a real sense of the cost of the oppressive weight that is being put on the person. It's fearful. There's a storm brewing, um, and I think it's it's just a nuance I hadn't really considered before. Like, what will you be like when you drag those wands? <laughs> to your destination um, and are you afraid of carrying them um, and maybe you're not it's just an interesting interpretation that this deck makes very very clear okay now uh, cups I already talked about the cups but I forgot there's my queen of cups um, sorry I, uh, I I missed her I must have misshuffled her in oh boy do I love this queen of cups I love it because I feel like she appreciates everything the emotions have to offer, right? She's dipping her feet in the water and she's making little like 
um, whirlpools with her fingers. She's brushing her fingers through. Also, her cup is full that she would presumably drink. Um, and uh, I think it's a really good card of balance to appreciate all of the varieties of mo emotion, um, even if they are difficult emotions. They are there because you are a human being and you should be having them. I remember reading this great quotation once, and I'm sorry I can't attribute it, but like emotions are meant to be felt and not dealt with, right? Uh, I mean, eventually you'll move through a period of acceptance if you're having negative emotions, but I mean, just feeling emotions is not wrong. And whether it's in your cup or under your feet or in your fingers, like there's a big variety of interacting with the water here that I really like. And that look of serenity on her face is beautiful. Oh, I'm talking too long, but I'm almost done. It's the swords and the swords in this deck are kick-ass. I just love them. Uh, Four of swords. Um, I'd forgotten all about this depiction. Um, so this is a time of rest and retreat. But um, there's light outside the window and there's a person there and medicine. Um, and in this time where we all really have to help each other in sometimes really unconventional ways, like I have, I, I host a Zoom um, for my, my father and um, some of his brothers and uh, like whoever wants to come and talk because they're lonely. Um, I at least to get to see coworkers, but for people who are retired, it's, it can be a lonely time. So, um, we all have to be creative in how we do it. And I have not seen a four of swords depicted this way. It's always the solitary figure. Um, but I, I just really dig it. I like it a lot. Um, the six of swords. What I like about the six of swords is the two swords on the front of the raft, um, moving into calmer waters, but being ready for everything. There are four swords on the back and two at the front. Um, and there is um, a sense of happiness coming, but also vigilance and readiness, which I really like. And finally, maybe the greatest card in the deck, although it's a toughie, but this eight of swords is a masterpiece, I think. Um, now, again, in a good uh, Eight of Swords, if you're following the Rider-Waite-Smith system, there's always a way for the person to get out of the, the sword. Like, they just can't see it. But something about this imagery of not being bound, but looking at yourself in a mirror and being bound, you can see the dress, the dress from the person outside the mirror becomes the binding inside the mirror. One of the swords is stuck into it. I just think this is one of the richest depictions of that card I have ever seen. And it is, I've heard many people say that this is what made them buy the deck. And I think that's quite right. Um, I just think it is fantastic. And even just like the hair is up outside of the mirror and it is down inside of the mirror, right? And the, the constriction and the binding and... So and again, I, I had to limit myself. This is such a fantastic deck that I really tried to just have a couple cards from each suit and then some majors. And this is what I plan to do with other decks that I've really learned something from that when even when I'm not looking at the Anna Kay deck, I'm going to look at other decks and maybe have that layer and have that nuance of the card in there. Um, so I'm going to make sure to end this before 30 minutes. Good Lord. Um, and again, no cat interruptions. Wow. Uh, but I did have to film it four times. So, eh, <laughs> it's as chaotic as usual. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'm hoping to maybe film another video tomorrow, maybe during daylight, but this light is actually great. So maybe that'll work. Hope you have an awesome night and we'll see you soon.